I'm Dr. Sidney Smith, and with me is Dr. Sarah DeFerranti. We're here at the American Heart Association's national uh, meeting, scientific sessions, where the new guidelines for management of blood cholesterol have been presented. And Sarah's going to talk to us a little bit about the pediatric and adolescent uh, recommendations. Thanks for this great opportunity. Uh, it's been uh, really important to include children and adolescents uh, in this guideline, and I think it will help a lot of um, uh, individuals be identified early in life so we can help them with a heart-healthy lifestyle uh, and with medication when necessary uh, to improve their cardiovascular health. So I guess one of the questions is, which groups are we concerned with? We're obviously concerned with all of young children as they, as they grow up, but the the group with FH, I think, would be one that we, and, and at what point should we be thinking about screening and asking and doing something? Uh, based on the literature that's available, it's reasonable to think about cholesterol screening uh, in children and adolescents who have a family history of early heart disease or very high cholesterol. You then would suspect a familial hypercholesterolemia. Uh, it's also reasonable to look at kids who have other risk factors like obesity and metabolic risk factors in case that we can help them modify their risk with lifestyle uh, advice. And then uh, it turns out that family history is not the best clue. Uh, if it's present, it's helpful, but the absence of a family history of high risk uh, doesn't exclude the possibility of a familial hypercholesterolemia. Mm -hmm. So it may be reasonable also to screen all uh, children and all adolescents once between 9 and 11, and then again between 17 and 21, um, primarily to pick up these cases of familial hypercholesterol without an obvious family history. Now, what about the child that's obese or overweight? Or is there anything special that you do there in terms of screening or approaching that child? Well, uh, many uh, kids uh, who have obesity uh, do have a higher rate of dyslipidemia, probably about a third. Uh, it's not generally in the range for a medication, but you would want to offer a very intensive lifestyle uh, therapy. And that's because we know childhood obesity is associated with uh, earlier uh, morbidity and mortality um, in adults. So that's a helpful tool. And knowing that you have a lipid disorder can modify the way that you provide um, advice around lifestyle. That's probably a motivating factor, too, I would think, for the diet and exercise and a lot of the lifestyle. For sure. I find when I see patients and I'm able to talk to them about their lipids, it's an easier conversation. And you can also see improvements in lipid values without too much change in the, in the absolute weight. We have two new classes of medical therapy, we, not just statins, that we've got azetamide, uh, we've got the PCSK9 inhibitors. What do we know about the use of these newer therapies with children? And we're, we're thinking about placing a child uh, on uh, cholesterol-lowering therapy. How does the evidence stack up, statins versus some of the newer therapies? What's, what's your approach? Well, really, we have the most information about uh, statins. We have 11 randomized controlled trials. Over 1,000 uh, young uh, 10 to 17-year-olds have been enrolled in those trials. Uh, and they show good efficacy in terms of lowering LDL and low um, rates of uh, potential side effects that are not different from placebo. There are three uh, publications around azetamide in children. Um, but not the same um, depth of evidence, and I wouldn't say that those would be the first line. Um, PCSK9 inhibitors have been used in select children with very high LDL, um, generally when the clinical picture is one of a, a homozygous FH, um, but there is some receptor activity, so very rare cases. And generally, um, we're able to treat kids who have high LDL, even pretty substantially elevated numbers, with a statin with good efficacy. The new guidelines are recommending statin therapy in general. We have recommendations for screening, statin therapy in adolescents. Um, are there any situations outside of FH where you would be treating a child with statin therapy? Or are you going to mainly focus on lifestyle? 
We mainly focus on lifestyle for all of our patients with the addition of statin for FH. There may be rare circumstances uh, where we might consider another medication, um, diabetes or other risk factors, but the evidence base is really primarily around familial hypercholesterolemia. I think the important point is that it has to start with children. If we wait until people are 45 and 50 and are having heart attacks, we've waited too long. And to make a real change in society today, we need to focus on health in the children. I would certainly agree. I think if we can deliver into our adult colleagues a, a cohort of children who has ideal cardiovascular health or good cardi cardiovascular health, we've done our job. Um, identifying the kids who are at the highest risk related to a genetic or familial hypercholesterolemia is a really important way in which we can modify their lifelong risk. Uh, and heart healthy uh, diet and physical activity are extremely important. Well, thank you. This has been very helpful, and I'm hoping that these new guidelines will have an impact on the children and uh, we'll be able to implement them effectively. I'm hoping so, too.